Well, um, last week, who was here last week? Yeah, I did the register last week. That's fairly accurate. Well done. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, we launched Reach 24. And uh, if you missed that talk, can I encourage you to catch up? You can do so on our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, you can find out about the vision behind Reach. But as way of a recap, as way of a recap, about two years ago, well, not about, it was two years ago, I launched <laughs> uh, Reach, which is a 10-year plan that we feel God is calling us to. And I reminded ourselves of the mission of the church. And when I say the mission of the church, I mean God's mission for his church. Should we remind ourselves what that mission is? Yes, Mark, we shall. You are on it this morning, people. I'm loving it. Let's turn, shall we, to our mission statement, which you can find in Matthew um, 28, verses uh, 18 to 18. And it's going to be on the screen if you're in the room. If you're online, welcome again. It'll be on your device as well. And Jesus said to them, who? To the disciples, and he's saying this to us too, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore. He didn't say, go camp in a cul-de-sac called church. <laughs> he didn't say, go create a community and lock the doors, did he? He said, go, therefore, and make disciples of all what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, the end of the age. Therein lies our mission statement. And as a church, we have always responded to the call over these past 36, 37 years to go and make disciples. We're not a convert factory. We are a discipleship-making church. And I talked about the fact that God is calling us and encouraging us once again to extend our reach to reach the lost. That is the business that we're in. We're in the Father's business. This is what we are called to do, to reach the lost. We are in a mission. And so how are we going to respond? In, by doing what? Creating and places for people to encounter Jesus. Amen. Well done. That's what we do in response to God's call to extend our reach. What do we do? We create spaces and places for people to encounter Jesus. Why? Because it's all about Jesus. We don't have to hype the Holy Spirit. We don't have to manufacture something. We just need to create the space for people to encounter the risen Lord. Why is that important? Let's recap. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Did he say, I will show you the way? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so our job is to introduce people to Jesus because when people encounter the risen Lord, things happen. And we looked in the Bible of those wonderful stories of the, the woman with the issue of blood. We looked at Nathaniel under the fig tree. And I recounted some amazing testimonies of people in our church who have encountered Jesus and whose lives have been transformed. And so our business is to create spaces and places. And over the past two years, um, as it relates to spaces, we launched our brand new youth auditorium. Um, we launched Ventureland, our space, treasure chest ministry. So many more besides over the past couple of years. And then I talked about places. And places, I communicated two years ago, was that we were moving to a multi-site church model. What does that mean? It means that we will launch sites in different geographical locations, that we're still the same church, but we meet in different places. And so we launched Hatfield in 22, Verso Hatfield. Last year, we launched Verso the Mount. And we're going to be continuing to launch new sites this year, which is really exciting. And so that brings us fast forward to this morning. That was your recap. If you'd like more detail, then catch up online. But over the course of this year, we're going to launch three new sites. 
which is extremely exciting. And so this week, next week, and the week afterwards, we're going to be communicating those with you. And in a moment, I'm going to invite uh, someone up. But before I do that, I just want to say this. Do you remember the Isabel Allen prophecy that I looked at last week? Isabel Allen is a prophetess. She came, uh, we did a conference with Catch the Fire in 2019, and she um, came to us and spoke with us, and we were blessed that she joined us on a Sunday service, and she gave myself and the church uh, an amazing prophetic word, and I just want to once again touch on the word that she gave us, uh, this segment that I want to give. She said this, there are many shepherds in this church that need to be released with authority. As as well as a way to be opened up for them, it is time to position people in the post they need to be in and to open those multiple gates. What does that mean? It means to extend our reach, to reach the lost. There are many racehorses in this church ready to run. Go therefore. Open the gates, the Lord is saying to us, for the racehorses of this house, release them to their races for they need to run. And that really underpins one of our vineyard values, which is everyone gets to play. It's not about outsourcing your great commission to the the guy on the stage. Sorry to disappoint you. But we are all part of this great commission. And my job here, our job as a leadership team, is to equip you for the work of the ministry and to let you run and open the gates. And I'm so excited to, uh, to uh, introduce one of our racehorses, <laughs> so to speak. Can you give a please a big hand for Peter Young to come on the stage? <laughs> Peter, good to see you. Come and, come and join me here on the stage. I'm not sure I could ever be described as a racehorse. <laughs> well, take it as a compliment, brother. Strong and agile and fast. There you go. Thank you. So... Um, Peter, many people here will know you and, and Deesa, but maybe just give us a brief uh, hello and who you are. Well, good morning. Um, my name is Peter Young. I'm married to lovely Deesa over there. Uh, we have two children, both at university, Ben and Helena, so they're not here this morning. Um, and we've been coming here to Verso Vineyard for about 20 years. Yeah, a long time, eh? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Many of you will know Peter and Deesa. They're just an amazing couple and family. It's just such a blessing having you guys here. Um, So the reason we're here this morning is that we have had a heart uh, as a a church um, and as a leadership team for a while in terms of St. Albans, the city in Central. Uh, We really are blessed by this facility here uh, in this industrial estate. But we really see a need for us to be more prominent in the center. And that was really the opportunity for us to have a conversation. And so maybe if you can just unpack what your heart is for what will now be Verso Central and talk about that for us, Peter. Yeah, it's unbelievably exciting. Uh, the idea is that we, we, we um, open up a, a Christian cafe in central St. Albans on St. Peter Street uh, which will be amazing. It's, the idea is that we have a cafe and a, a flower shop and a Christian bookshop. And yeah. yeah. You can say amen to that. Yeah. Uh, and there'll be Bible verses on the walls. As you buy uh, a drink or whatever, you'll be given a, a card with a Bible verse on and a, and a QR code for the next Alpha course. Uh, we'll be evangelizing, um, and, and also, that's only half of it. The other half is that we want to have a Verso Care there as well, so we'll be running Verso Care from there. Um, but it's all come about from uh, my walks through the city. Mm. And because you live in, in, right in the center, Yeah, we live you? in central St. Albans, yeah. very blessed to be there, and... Um, Deesa and I were walking down Hoywell Hill one day and we walked past Café Rouge, mm. which has been empty for a while, and we both said to each other, gosh, this place would be amazing. And, and then we had a meeting, literally a couple of weeks later. You gave me a kind of buzz, hey, can we catch up? Yeah, because uh, I've had a heart to do something with the church, and I, I didn't quite know what. Um, 
I've been volunteering with Verso Care for a couple of years on the bridge program. Yeah, you're one of the bridge mentors that we have. Yeah. Which is amazing. Which transforms lives. Yeah. And uh, we've seen it. It's incredible. Um, and I don't say that lightly. Uh, and it's also transformed my life as well, watching all of these things going on. Um, so it's a real blessing to the community. And we want to take that through to central St. Albans. And we, we run in courses from there. Uh, I mean, the, for those of you who don't know Bridge, we, we run CAP courses, which is Christians Against Poverty, so help with debt relief and financial advice. There's boundaries courses, so people can learn how to say no um, and learn what boundaries really mean. Mm. And it's, it's, we've seen it, even in the last few weeks, lives have been transformed. Uh, so it's extraordinary. Um, and we just want to take that more, more into the centre. St. Albans. Maybe, Peter, you can just unpack for us a little bit more about that sense of call that you've had. Um, mm. I mean, you've been in the business world for, for many years. And um, so what, 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 what happened that all of a sudden you're like, oh, I feel like uh, God's calling me to be a site pastor. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm an interior designer. have been for 30 years. Um, I'll be handing out business cards at the back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Joking. I um, love it. I love it. Um, and... Since I became a Christian 25 years ago, I've been working, uh, helping, being, doing practical things, decorating people's homes and all that sort of thing. And always had a feeling that I would end up working for the church in some capacity, but I never knew what it would be. And then since COVID, um, my, I had to have my own business. And, <laughs> and, um, and that sort of, since COVID is sort of slightly... Uh, tailed away and and I've been feeling God is calling me to do something there's a reason this is happening because I've never looked for work before it's always come in and uh, God is calling me and we've been praying about it and praying about it and then I came to see you Mm -hmm. and and you just said well we've had this idea for something in central and it's just all it's all in God's timing it's incredible yeah I mean God's timing really is amazing I mean just to add a a bit to that as well um Trevor, who heads up our discipleship and pastoral um, department here, and uh, Mel, who, as you guys know, is one of our pastors here, they really had a heart for Central as well. Mm. Coming from a pastoral component, they said, wouldn't it be great that we could have pastoral uh, suites within a place in town that we can meet with people and pray with people? Mm. And uh, we were having a conversation, and, uh, and they said, wouldn't it be great to use a Cafe Rouge building? Mm. I said, yeah, that really would be great. And then, I, no word of a lie, I think it was in a couple of weeks, we met, and you said, I was walking past Cafe Rouge. Yeah. And he said, wouldn't this be an amazing place? I'm like, Lord, you are doing something here. Yeah. There's a gate right here that we need to open. And it's just been so amazing these past, um, well, few months now, as we've been kind of navigating this through this and planning what this looks like. It's very, very exciting. It is, it is. Uh, and, and also, I mean, the Cafe Rouge site is still available, although we, we're trying to sort of muscle our way in there. Um, but we are looking for other sites as well. We were looking at the Argos site um, just off the Market Street, Market Square, um, but that's being demolished. So we are praying about that, yeah. where we might be. Now, uh, also, Mark, we, we really want to be on St. Peter Street. We want to have a window onto, onto the busy part of Amen. St. Albans. You know, it's really front and centre. Absolutely. So exciting. Now, um, we can give people maybe a flavour of what that's, that's going to look like. Mm. As Peter's an interior designer, he's obviously got to put a mood board together, which is just wonderful. <laughs> so let's put it on the screen. Just a flavour of what this could look like. Maybe just talk us through this. Yeah, well... Yeah. Well, it, we want it to be a really comfortable, relaxed, open space. So it's going to be a really lovely cafe. We're going to have comfortable seating, uh, sofas, armchairs. A lot of the cafes you see in Central St. Albans, they're all hard, hard chairs, and they're all sitting over their laptops. Uh, and, yeah. and this is not about that. This is about communication, communities coming together and chatting and, and mm-hmm. conversing. Um, and we're going to be there going around, praying and talking to people. And, and it's just about getting involved with the church, yeah. with the community. And there'll be a small, there's a Christian cafe, Christian bookshop, Christian flower shop, if there is such a thing, you know, there Christian flowers. Um, 
So, yeah, and it's just going to be God's heart in the heart Amen. of the city. And what I love about this is another component to this is we want, you know, we believe in kingdom businesses, and there, mm. are, there are people out there that feel led to a call by God for a, for a cafe or call by God for a bookshop or call mm. by God for a, to be a florist. And so we're going to provide the umbrella and the way in which, like, almost like an incubator, where these business people that are called by God can go and run their places within mm. Verso Central. So it's got so many wonderful components to this. And also, uh, we want to have a kitchen in the back, and so we can be cooking. We can, if you remember Jamie Oliver's 15 restaurant, where he took in people who are unemployed or, or disadvantaged in whatever way, we want to bring people in, teach them to cook, and they can provide food for the cafe, food for the evening's alpha courses, for other lunches. So they're learning a, a skill and a trade, and we can take on people who, need to, who are looking to be, become a barista. They can you know, do a six-month program, and they can go off and, and work in in um, other cafes around. Yeah. So it's really, you know, bringing people through. Um, yeah. Yeah, really excited. I mean, the, the vision here is that we will launch it initially as a, as a week thing. Uh, not a week, as in W-E-A-K, but W-E-E-K, uh, from Monday <laughs> through to Saturday. And then the vision is that we'll be launching Sunday services within this venue uh, right in the center of town as well. Now, we, we, we don't have a date for when this is going to launch. We're working towards later this year, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things we've got to plan. Mm. So, Peter, how can we be praying for you? Uh, maybe within that, just give us an update on the next steps and how we can pray. Well, the, the big, we, we need a venue. The big, that's the big thing. We need, we need um, to get the venue sorted. And we, before that, we, without that, we can't really do anything. Um, so we're praying madly for that. Um, also pray for uh, any obstacles, challenges, anything from the enemy, pray against that as well, because that will come for sure. Um, and also we, we will need volunteers and support. Um, so it's actually quite an ambitious uh, program, uh, thing to do. So there'll be plenty to get involved with. Um, it's incredible, it's, I'm so excited about it. Yeah. It really is amazing. It's yeah. worth saying that we launched, we launched these new sites at our leaders meeting that we had uh, probably a couple of months ago. And since that time, we, you've been building a leadership team. Yep. Uh, there's a WhatsApp press support. Yep. So if, if you want to get involved, at the end of um, probably in three weeks' time, when we look at everyone gets to play, we're going to look at how we can play our part in all these different sites and all that God's doing with us in Reach 24. But if they want to find out more, they can... Email office at verso.church and then mm. they'll send you the info. Yep. Yeah, that's great. right. Um, okay, with that, you know what I think would be great to do is we're going to pray for you, Peter. Let's all stand. We're going to invite um, Bruce up and I believe Wendy who are going to join us in praying for you. And Steph as well, when you come up, we'll grab another one of those mics there. Peter, I'll grab that mic from you. Um, this is a really big, bold vision that if God doesn't turn up, we'll all fall flat on our face. But that's the kind of faith God is looking for, amen? And God is calling us. You know, he says in Ephesians that he will do immeasurably more than we can ever hope or imagine. So if we're hoping and imagining this, I'm pretty excited about what God's going to do us through this. And uh, with that, let us start praying for Peter and indeed uh, for your family and the team as well. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Lord, I, I can think of... Uh, no better steward for this task than Peter. Um, th thank you for instilling him, in him the spirit of hospitality, the gift that makes people feel comfortable mm. at home, wherever they may be, that this, his extraordinary professional creativity and skills are going to be put to work for the ultimate assignment, yes. providing a place and a space in the center of our city where all will be welcome to receive, explore, and engage more with the love of God. Thank you for the strength of his faith and the amazing places it has taken him and the place you are now leading him to. Amen. Loving Lord, it is an honor for all of us to stand together and commend this fine man of God into your care with Deza and the family. We lovingly commend him to you.
We thank you, Lord, for the passion and the compassion that you have poured into his heart for this. We thank you, Lord, for the stirrings of something great mm. that is being born at this very time. Yes, <laughs> and we stand with you, Peter, as a community of believers, of brothers and sisters, and we just say, Lord, thank you for this new place. Mm. Thank you that you've chosen it, you know where it is, yes, and we thank you that we will be sensitive as you lead us to the exact yes, spot. Lord, we thank you that you already are wooing each one who's to come there. We thank you, Lord, that this is going to be a place of transformation. Mm. And as I've been praying, I see it as a well. I see that this is a well in the middle of St. Albans yes, Lord God. where living water is going to flow as yes, never God. before. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I see that there will be encounters with Jesus, just like the woman of Samaria, yeah. but multitudes more who will come inquiring, afraid, broken, proud, arrogant, whatever, but they will come and they will meet Jesus. Mm. They will be transformed from the inside. And Lord, we thank you for what you are doing here. We thank you that there will be beauty for ash. There will be the oil of joy for mourning. There will be the spirit of rejoicing in place of heaviness. That this will be such a beautiful place of fragrance and of life and of living water, <laughs> and there will be flowers to celebrate your beauty. It will be a holy place where people can sense your presence. Yes. And as we commend Peter and Deza and the family and all who will take part, mm. we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to declare your goodness in this place. Amen. So bless you, Lord, and thank you for Peter. Mm. <laughs> Amen. I've got more questions. Bless you, Jesus. Uh, Deesa, can I pray a blessing on you as well, please? Can you come up? Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you. I think it's really important that you come and stand by your wonderful man here. You can stand by his beautiful woman. Thank you, Lord, for this couple. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I want to thank you for this couple, Lord. <clears throat> Father, I want to thank you, Jesus, for... The calling you placed on both of their lives, actually, Lord. Father, I want to thank you for Deesa. Father, I want to thank you for her obedience to saying yes to you, Lord Jesus, in supporting her husband so beautifully. Father, I know that she's going to be such an important part of this journey for Peter, Lord. That he's going to be the person that he, she, he turns to, Lord, in the times of need, in times of joy and for rest. So Father, I pray that you just instill in her, Lord, just a deep strength in the innermost part of her being, Lord God. You give her all that she needs for this journey ahead. And I'm just thinking about a horse. <laughs> Every horse, good horse, has a good trainer. <laughs> and Father, I thank you, Jesus, that she is going to be <laughs> given the gifts to be that, that wonderful, that perfect trainer that he needs to keep him going, to keep him supple, Father, I pray that she would never underestimate the gifts that you put in her, Lord Jesus, that she would never underestimate the calling on her life and the, and, the, and the importance of her role in this, Jesus. Bless her now, I pray in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, Amen. we do thank you for all that you're doing, and we just pray a blessing on Peter and Deesa you, and, the, and the leadership team. And Bless we look her, forward to that moment, Lord, when we commission them out. Jesus. Until that time, Lord, we just pray you would open those gates for them. The doors that need to be opened will be opened. Those doors Thank that are not of you Jesus. would be closed. For your protection upon them, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. Mm -hmm. And we commit them to your care, we pray, in your precious name. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's give Amen. these guys a hand. Amen. You may take a seat. Wow, exciting, hey? Listen. If you feel called that you want to find out more about uh, what the Lord's doing and be part of Verse Central, then do email office at verso.church, grab Peter, grab one of the leaders, I'd love to be able to speak with you. As I said, 
Um, we don't have a date for launching yet. We are certainly in the planning stages of this, but we would hope that later this year we'll be in a position to be able to do that. Um, next week, we're going to um, announce another one of our sites that we'll be launching in September, and then a week after that, we're going to launch, uh, announce another site that's going to be launching in September. Um, I want to talk about extending our reach in terms of places because... Um, as you know, as a church, we have had a history of responding to the call to extend our reach through church planting. And as part of the Vineyard Movement, as I said last week, we are a missional movement. We recognize that great commission, and we believe that local churches are just so important. Um, and I think over the past 30 plus years, we've planted out uh, about 12 churches, which has been a real blessing and a privilege to do so. And I'm really excited that this morning we get to look at another church uh, that we'll be planting out uh, this year. Um, it's not in the UK, it's somewhere else. And with that, I'd like to invite up Ian and Lucy Harvey to the stage. <laughs> Wonderful, have a seat here, guys. Let me give you these. Now, Many of you will know those old faces. I'm not talking about age. <laughs> I'm not insulting you. Um, we'll recognize uh, Ian and Lucy have been part of our church for a long time. Um, but something is happening where you guys are. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more? Maybe just say who you guys are. Shall I start? I'll Please. introduce who we are. Thank you. Ian and Lucy, we've been married about 40, 41 years, just over. Congratulations. <laughs> It's amazing. And we have th three children, six grandchildren. Wow. Um, we, we were at Verso St Albans for about 20 years, um, until a few years ago, um, when we felt, well, we, we bought some, a property in France to run holiday cottages. We didn't feel any particular call from God to do it, but we just felt that he was giving us permission to follow our dreams. Wow. That's a beautiful thing. So France, eh? What's happening in France at the moment? What's going on there? Okay, perhaps we can give you a little bit of context. If we could have the map up just to show yeah, you where we map. are in France. There go. Um, so there's a map of most of France, gives you the vague shape, but you can see the red pin in the middle of it. We are absolutely in the mid middle of France. Right in the middle. Um, I always like to say we're in the heart of rural France, very rural indeed. If we could zoom in on the next one just to give you a feel, we've got a big national park where we're in. Um, very low population. All the all the church plant handbooks, church planting handbooks, will tell you to go to a big conurbation. Um, <laughs> we didn't get that bit of the the story, so let's uh, let's go to the next screen. Um, we live in a tiny village called Saint Sivran, um, 131 population. Wow, <laughs> that is small. That's lovely. Um, it sounds like our nearest town with the supermarkets and banks, five miles away, 532 population. Uh, there's, an, there's another bigger town, Chiac, 1,084, you know, getting a bit bigger. Um, Argenton sur Creuse, 12 miles away, 4,850. Um, Chateau Roux um, is probably the largest area in our, our department. Um, 42,000, same as Hatfield. Interesting. Um, wow. So when you think of where, where we are here in, in the UK and the number of people around, um, there aren't that many around. And even Limoges, it's, it's 50 miles away, um, smaller than St Albans. So a very, very rural area. Yeah. So, okay, so you went out to France. You, God said, hey, go follow your dreams. You set up these jeets. Absolutely. Trivian. Uh, you can get business cards afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew we're turning this into a network event? But hey, why not? Let's get some pop-up stands going. Um, <laughs> so... What started happening? Like, how, how did God start speaking to you about doing something in what, to your point, is a very rural location? Okay, yeah, it, it is. It, it's all been very gradual and organic. And if, uh, the first thing I want to say about it is, seven years ago, I stopped leading Alpha. I'd been mentoring Jenna and AJ to take over the leadership. And at the end of the course, seven years ago, the team prayed for me. Um, during that, um, a certain someone, Mark, um, had a word for me, and he said the, that actually it had been like I'd been running a relay race and I passed on the baton, but actually the next thing that God had for me, the next event God had for me, was the pole vault. 
Yes, I laughed as well. <laughs> um, but I just, I just sensed from that that, that what God was saying to me is, you know, I'm going to take you so far out of your comfort zone, you won't believe it. <laughs> and that's certainly been the case. And so, God, you had that word about pole vault, okay. and, you know, you're there in France. What led you to start <laughs> saying, well, hold on a minute, I think God's calling us to plant a church? Well, I think the next stage was, um, it was a good few years ago, having felt that we were the only Christians in the area, right. in the area we were delighted to meet our friends Don and Lynn, um, who are... Give us a wave, Don <laughs> and Lynn. This morning. <laughs> Let's give them a hand, yeah, as well. Bless you guys. <laughs> And Don and Lynn, are, they were vineyard pastors in Somerset, mm. net now retired, but we found when we met them that they had a holiday house just a mile or two from our house, so wow. two, two vineyard couples so close together Only God, hey? in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so as we got to know them, we, we started, but whenever they were out on holiday, we would get together and do church, just the four of us, mm. or occasionally if our families were visiting, they'd join in too. So that, that's how we started. Okay, and then five years ago, um, we were at the Vineyard National Leaders Conference, and uh, the, the Lord spoke to me during the final evening session, and he just said to me, Ian, I want your yes. And, and my response was, yes, Lord, you, you've got my yes. What is it? And he said, no, I just want your yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you've got it, Lord. What is it? <laughs> And uh, people who know me will know that I always have the what is it yeah. question. And actually, for a number of years, I've had to just keep saying to, to the Lord, yes, you have my yes. And can we have the Isaiah verse up? This, this, um, this verse has just become my signature verse, if you like, through, and well, for both of us, I think, really. Yeah, I mean, it's great. It starts with the right word, yes. Yeah. Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. And we've had to wait. Mm. And we, we didn't feel permission for God to say, this is what it is. This is what you're doing. We, all, we always had the inkling that, yes, it was going to be church planting. And we were being nudged by certain other people <laughs> towards that. Not just on and in others who we knew in the area. Uh, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord. And, and that, for me, is what this is all about. The, the, it doesn't want to be about Ian and Lucy and what they're doing. It wants to be about what God and he is doing. Mm. And uh, can I just say with that, that verse as well, for you, you know, what God wants most of all is your yes. Amen. Preach okay, you may have dreams and, that, and that's brilliant, but first of all, God wants your yes. And when you have your dreams, you know, keep saying yes, but wait for God. Mm. Wait for him. Walk in his ways so that he will be glorified through this. Amen. That's such a good message for us all to hear. And yeah, we can give a hand to that. Okay. And it's worth saying, yeah, Lucy. Can I come in there? Please um, do. Yes, it was around that time that I had my own Yes Lord moment. Um, the lovely Heather Ryan, who many mm. of you will know, um, she had a, a word of knowledge for me saying that God was going to use my voice for such a time as this. Wow. And those of you who know me, I'm, I'm not a public speaker, I'm not a, this is out of my comfort zone. <laughs> but over the, the years, and just saying yes, God, that he has been nudging me step by step out of my comfort zone. So that, that, that's my, my yes, Lord. That's amazing. I just love what you guys are modeling, which is that obedience to Christ and that yes to spend yourselves on him. And last week, you know, we looked at that, that our reach vision has a dual purpose. Not only is it so that as a church, we fulfill the mission that God has placed on us to make disciples, but it's God's tailor-made discipleship program for each one of us. That you see, we are called, and Steph prayed this earlier, that we are called to pick up our cross, that we are called to die to ourselves and to give all of ourselves for others. And you guys are just so beautifully modeling that and encouraging us in that to say, hold on. And I think it's worth saying, you know, we need to have... Uh, eyes of eternity. You know, we are here for but a moment. Like, what is our purpose here? Our purpose is to make Christ known. And I just love how you guys have talked about the journey that you've been on yep. and, and what the Lord has been saying. Maybe you can give okay, us a bit fast, of a flavour. Yep. Fast forward, we moved out That's it. in 2020. Give us a flavour of what it looks time. like now then. Ian. Okay. Well, I think the next thing, just very quickly, 18 months ago, we were sitting with Don and Lynn in their, their home here in the UK 
discussing and dreaming about possibility of running an evening of carols mm. out there. And, uh, and with a bit of nudging and pushing from them, we <laughs> quite thought... A yes, quite, quite a bit. Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we thought, yes, let's go for it. So a couple of months later, we put on an evening of English carols and readings. Um, 30 people came. Amazing. We didn't bother going because we had COVID. <laughs> 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 you know, Honestly, what, where's what your commitment? About, what where's your commitment, about? you two? <laughs> I ended up doing the little talk by video that, that the guys played, <laughs> and the team did a brilliant job. 30 people there. Um, we did it again last year, 70 plus people there. Um, oh, yeah, and it's just... 70 plus in a location that has 131 people. <laughs> I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? Some of them did doing... travel a little way. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. And, you know, it's just so grateful for Don and Lynn in, in their resources in leading the, the music there for that. Oh, wonderful. Um, and then through that, we were meeting other Christians. You know, a few Christians were, were just saying, yeah, I'm, I'm around. I'm interested in what you're doing. Um, so last September, we took the plunge and said, we're going to meet monthly. Uh, so uh, we were there, um, yeah, maybe... Um, I to guess around. So, can we just put up a quick photo of where we oh, that's where your, we are? That's, that's yep. That's, uh, that's on the front pretty. of our business card. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> next picture. Next picture, please. Oh wow. This is we, we've just did yeah. a little room up in a upper room in a barn. We call it the Owlery. Um, that's where we're meeting at the moment. Um, so wonderful. Uh, the the reality is we we're, we're getting sort of 17, 18, 19 people along. Uh, each month. We've had about 26 people come in total, not all at the same time. Um, and we, we won't be able to take many more before we're too big for there. So we're now looking at... Uh, uh, oh, actually, that's your bit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so what is next then, Lucy? OK. <laughs> Sorry, we've been re really encouraged by how the group are gelling together. Yeah. That, that, that's been really encouraging. Um, one thing we've just started doing last week is running the Pete Gregg 24-7 mm. prayer course, Amazing. which many of you might have come across. So we're doing that concurrently in person and also online. Um, yes, yeah, so, so to, going back to the, the space, we're rapidly outgrowing the space, but we have a, another barn next door to that one that's much bigger that we're trying to make into a space make a place for people mm. um yeah so that's that's our next project oh that's yeah. really exciting i mean i love how god's place he said you know go follow your dreams and you went to a place that was ready to have a church in i love how uh, god works it, it appears so it appears, it so. appears so yeah someone knew what he was doing <laughs> um so for us our, our primary focus at the moment is the english-speaking community yeah um but we we also know that there are a lot of french people who who actually like what we're doing you know we the 70 plus people at the carols about 20 of them were french um Wonderful. and we absolutely do not feel equipped to do bilingual services at the moment so we're just praying and saying lord what are you saying here how do yeah. how do we do this so that's a, a big challenge for us but, but our vision is to be a blessing for our local communities and, and reach people with the good news about Jesus. We just Amen. want to declare him Amen. and say, he's the one. Thank you, Lord. And, and also my vision, you know, when, when you're approaching starting this, when most people are thinking about retiring, um, I'm immediately thinking, how do we grow leaders and how do we replicate what we're doing? I think the only way this model will work, you know, will be for, for multiple small congregations and I have this crazy dream the, the, the you know, France is divided up into little communes think of parishes in in England I've, yeah. I've just got this this stupid dream uh, that, that there'll be a, a presence like us in every commune wow. in our area that's thank you Lord God is calling people with faith just to go take those big risks and I just love hearing your heart for that now we are on a path uh, where at some point we will be commissioning you out, uh, God willing, as, as vineyard pastors. Uh, we're on that journey, um, uh, but we're not there yet. How can we pray for you? What are the maybe hurdles that, that we need to kind of get through to get to that point? Okay, a couple, couple of practical things. Um, first of all, for us as a couple, we are very, very busy and when God first sort of suggested church planting, our thought was, well, we're far too busy. So we, we need a bit of spiritual guidance on how to reassess what we're doing and to be able to make this our priority. Mm. Um, and the other thing is we, we just want prayer that God will continue to nudge us out of our comfort zones and take us into new, new spheres that, wow. for him. 
Yep. Yep. Just on a practical level, um, we need this new barn re-roofed, and the, the roof was promised to arrive tomorrow, so if I can encourage oh, you wow. to pray that he will, because Don and Lynn are busy praying that he won't, because he's doing their roof at the moment, <laughs> and I've <just> finished. <laughs> wow. I love it, I love it. <laughs> And, and please pray for us and the national leaders of, of Vineyard as we navigate the bureaucratic process mm. for becoming a church in France and to be able to be commissioned um, as pastors, Vineyard pastors out there. Um, but also there are five other small churches who are looking to become Vineyard across the whole of France, no one near us, but um, God is doing something and I'm just... Uh, it's wonderful being a part of it. Oh, it's just Thank so you. wonderful. It's just so exciting as well. Well, I think it would be rightly appropriate to pray for you guys. So can we all stand? And um, why don't we invite Don and Lynn up as well? Let's give these guys a hand as they come up to pray. And um, Debbie and Jeremy are going to come up as well, who you know are part of our church. And you're Verso group leaders as yes. well, aren't they? So why don't you guys come up? Um, I'll grab this mic from you, Lucy. Uh, Jeremy and Debbie, why don't you come this side of these guys? And we're going to pray for you. And Steph, why don't you just come up and join us? Um, and I'm looking forward to when we're going to be praying you out. But let's just um, pray for these guys as they continue on this, on this journey. Bless you. Lord, we thank you for what we've just heard. We thank you for what you're doing in that area of France. And Lord, we know that France is one of the driest nations spiritually. And Lord, they desperately need you. So, Lord, we pray your blessing on what's happening here. Mm. Lord, we pray that you will build your church. Amen. And, Lord, as that community continues to grow and walk with you, I pray that as they lift high the name of Jesus, that you will draw all men, women, children to yourself. And I pray that your kingdom will come. I pray that you will provide all that is needed. And I pray that there will be signs of your kingdom, signs and wonders. Will you move in power? Will you bring healing? Will yes. you bring restoration? Lord, may there be many testimonies year on year in what you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you. Amen. Amen. Um, Ian and Lucy, as I was praying for you this weekend, I was drawn to Romans 12. And there's two verses I just want to... <coughs> particularly pray into. So verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Mm. And verse 10, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you have given uh, Ian and Lucy. You have already provided all that they need through your grace. I just pray that you would give them confidence, that they would know this is your calling that you have gifted them, that you will gift them in each situation, that they have the strength they need because their strength is in you. Mm. Just help repel any uh, attacks of the enemy, any doubts, and remind them that it is in your strength that this church will grow. Yes, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you for their devotion to each other, their devotion to you. Mm. Uh, we thank you for how they have blessed uh, our Verso group. Um, for the love that they have received from that wonderful group of people. Protect their marriage, mm. we pray, as you guide them, help them prioritize. We ask that you would help the love that they have for each other and for you to just flow out uh, to this group that you are gathering in France. Lord, we thank you that this group is gelling uh, already, that there is love there. And I just pray that through Ian and Lucy, um, love for you and love for each other would be at the very heart of this new community. Bless them as they sacrifice themselves to you, um, as they live as living sacrifices. Draw them together and bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. I just had the word, be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, I've known Ian and Lucy for a very long time. <laughs> they were my connect group leaders when I was in my late teens. And so I've, um, yeah, I've, I've journeyed with them. And um, I'm just reminded of the faithfulness that they showed then to us as a group. <clears throat> Such a beautiful role model of a mother and father to many of us, my sister Mel included. 
And um, just the faithfulness they showed and the love and encouragement they showed to us, it just, there's so much blessing that's come even from that time for you both. The Lord has seen the sacrifice and the love that you've shown others. But as I was looking at you both as I was sitting at the front, I just saw the anointing of Sarah and Abraham upon you. And I'm sure you probably laughed like she did about having a, having a child in a more mature age. Um, but um, the Lord is saying, my, my blessing is upon you. Um, and never doubt because of your maturity and because of where you are, because my favor is upon you mm. and my anointing is upon you. And then I was reminded of Abraham when he stood up high with Lot and he said, you choose where, which, where, what, where, where you want, I'll go the opposite way. And I really thought that's both of you, you are both so much like that. You've always put others before yourselves and you've always said, you choose first. I'll bless you first. I'll bless you first. And the Lord is saying, I've seen your heart posture mm. and I've seen your heart for others. And now it's your time to know the fruit of that season and it's coming. So, Father, I thank you for them, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the anointing that you put upon them both, the anointing of Abraham and Sarah, Lord, that you'll multiply and multiply and multiply because your favour is upon them, because mm. they've been faithful in the small things, Lord. You're going to give them even more. So we ask you bless them now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord. Amen. Lord, we, we thank you for their yes. Would you bless them in that, Lord? Just come, Lord Jesus. Let's anoint them now. Bless them, Lord God. Would you just give them everything they need? Lord? Just pray for increased favor, increased strength. Open the doors that need to be opened, Lord. Close those doors that are not of you. Bring the people, Lord, that you have called to come alongside them and walk alongside them. Just protect them physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and their children. Would you bless them, we pray, in this great endeavor. We ask in your precious name. Amen. Bless you guys. Why don't we give these guys a hand?